Welcome to the Imagine AI Live podcast, coming to you from the Fountain Blue in Las Vegas at our conference here. I have a pair of guests with me sitting down to talk today. Can you please each introduce yourselves and then we'll talk about what you guys are working on. Sure. Uh, my name is Teresa Kennedy. I come in from Atlantic City, New Jersey, and I've worked in the AI and blockchain space um, as an entrepreneur for several years now. I've actually been in the cryptocurrency space since its inception, and I am excited about everything that has been evolving in the AI space and how we've been able to integrate it in the work that we are doing. Awesome. So we'll come back to that to learn about the work that you're doing, but let's meet our other guest. Yeah, my name is um, Michael Evans. I'm also associated with the Black History Foundation. Um, happy to be here and, and join um, the conference. Awesome. So what is it that you guys do with this foundation? So at the Black History Foundation, we've been working on uh, a blockchain for the preservation of history. Uh, we I feel that blockchain technology uniquely um, has a really good use case for the preservation of black history, um, it being immutable and decentralized, where the whole entire planet of community of people who are interested in its preservation can custody it, uh, rather than um, a particular museum. Black historical museums typically take at least 10 years or more to raise funding to house their artifacts. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, they're not supported enough financially to sustain themselves into longevity. Um, so we have a crisis in the archival of our history and the care and custody of our data mm -hmm. um, and the truthfulness of the data that we do have that is represented. Yeah. So we're building um, the technology behind being able to um, help resolve that problem. Um, and we are more recently uh, been working on a charity token launch for nonprofit organizations to raise funds through a 50-50 raffle with cryptocurrency. Wow. Um, and we've also been working on a AI model, um, Black History GPT, for de-biased information um, for black historical studies. Awesome. And how how are you building that and, and what information are you taking from to build that and keep it truthful and make sure it's not hallucinating or? Yes, so we haven't got to get to the data yet. Right now, this is such a massive undertaking. Um, and coming from a place with a lack of funding, um, like many other black founders of organizations, it's uh, been a challenge just to get the uh, basics covered of starting a new organization. Um, and so what we have been spending our time doing more recently is getting a real good understanding of how we can actually solve the problem with technology mm -hmm. and um, getting the right volunteers to help with building it out, um, which is a challenge in and of itself because we have to have really highly skilled people in various areas of technology for each different component. So one of the things that we feel is necessary that would be our next step on our roadmap that we're working on is a decentralized decision-making entity, which will get into bringing a collective, a consortium, a network of people who specialize in research and data of black historical information, mm -hmm. um, bringing that community together to help with that trustless environment and building the vetting and verification of the data that we'll be collecting. And Michael is heading that committee for the Black History Foundation. You want to add to that? Um, yeah, so the, the process is, is where um, members of the public would um, submit um, black facts and the uh, information supporting it. It would be reviewed by a panel of subject matter experts who would either validate or invalidate the um, information being presented. And then that as a package would be presented to the voting members. And then um, if it um, gathered enough votes, then it would be added onto the blockchain. Yeah, wow. It's a good process. Exactly. Yeah, solid. So how long have you guys been working on this project? Um, well, so we've 
the, the Black History Foundation um, got its birth out of the Black History DAO. Um, and so it's a spinoff of the, of the DAO. Um, and we um, created the Black History Foundation in June of um, 2023. In January 2024, we got our 501c3 um, um, letter of recognition from the IRS. Um, and we spent the first year, really all of 2024, laying the foundation from an organizational perspective, administrative perspective. And so now um, this year in 2025, um, we're focused on fundraising. Um, and so this is where our first project that really has our focus is our charity coin project. Awesome, wonderful. So what is your ultimate goal or vision for seeing how people can interact with what you're building? So ultimately the vision is for people to be able to interact with the information um, either through metaverse applications or um, just through research. I think that the generative AI project that we're working on, the chatbot will be a really interesting application for many different ways that people can interact with it, either through tours mm -hmm. in different areas, um, or to, we're just looking at really, in what ways do we have manifest in society that incorrect, inaccurate, or our information is just absolutely omitted, mm -hmm. that people can access the data to actually include it into what they're doing. So having it as a source that people can deposit information, kind of like Wikipedia is. Um, but knowing that that is there for people to access yeah. and cannot be taken down mm -hmm. is um, the ultimate goal of the laying the foundation of the technology. How in all, in all the many ways in the future that technology may evolve, because this is a really long-term legacy project, we're not rushing to build something to make money today. We're looking at how can we solve a real problem to impact future generations mm -hmm. and laying the foundation with the technology that we have right now. Um, with the um, advancements in AI um, and LLM models, um, unfortunately, uh, bad data leads to bad data. Mm -hmm. um, and even large organizations that have AI models. Last year, I contracted with OpenAI um, on their 4.0 model, um, D on DeBias in their 4.0 model. And even for a large company um, like that, it can be difficult with catching some of the small cultural nuances um, that we have and mm -hmm. even in language mm -hmm. uh, for um, low, what's called low resource languages. So a lot of African languages, Africa has a very diverse set of, of languages more than anywhere else on the planet. Yeah. Um, and so working with the different African languages and even the African American vernacular languages and the Caribbean languages mm -hmm. and bringing those into where LLM models can um, uh, communicate in their authentic voice rather than first translating into um, English or French and then into whatever. Um, yeah. So we have been working with even African linguists um, and getting the information and data in a way that the LLM models can actually work with, which um, is, is a big undertaking. Uh, but so we're, Knowing that that is a need and laying the foundation and working towards making it open source where other people can build on it and use the information. Um, I just think that um, it's a humanitarian project. really, <laughs> And there's so many different ways that that vision can go to be used mm -hmm. once it is in a digital format that can be used. And I think that AI can, is the best use case to make that happen with integrating with ancient languages, with modern languages, and the diversity that we have in our culture across the planet and actually recognizing that um, black history is humanitarian history across the entire planet, actually. Yeah. It's not just siloed to Africa. Yeah, amazing. It 
some of the stuff that you talked about working on is phenomenal, like your experience with helping with open AI and helping remove some of that bias. What was that experience like for you when you were working on that project? Um, it was quite interesting. Um, I can't talk too much about it. <laughs> it's a sign NDAs, NDA. I'm sure. Yeah, <laughs> fair. Yes, uh, but I, I, I can talk about what was published. Um, I can't talk about the work that I did individually. Uh, but um, what was eye-opening for me was that um, going into the experience, I was thinking that, you know, we can look at the biases that are in the AI models and then we can train it to do otherwise and we can just give it data and it'll help fix the problem. Yeah. <laughs> but it's actually a really big undertaking. Huge. Um, and it's just not that simple because we have so much data that has incorrect information about um, black history and um, lack of data about black history. Mm -hmm. So even those with big budgets and a good heart to represent things accurately just don't have the proper data to implement that. Mm -hmm. um, so it strengthened my resolve in why I started the Black History DAO and the Black History Foundation to ensure that we take advantage of the advancements and being able to collectively raise funds through cryptocurrency mm -hmm. for this type of cause because we need the budget of nations actually to fix this problem. Mm -hmm. It is just that big. Yeah. Um, and I think that we just forget about what happened when all of our information was destroyed, mm -hmm. that we have to go back and rebuild it. And when we have scholars who research and redo and rewrite, but they're rewriting and redoing and researching bad information, it's just a perpetual cycle of misunderstanding that mm -hmm. ultimately when you have people who are going off of bad data, it leads to conflict. And I'd like to see more harmony in the world between black people and other races. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I would love to keep talking more about this, but we just got to the end of our time slot today, but maybe we can share contact information and follow up is fascinating stuff. But can you please, before we wrap up, just share where people can find you, learn more about your foundation and help contribute to your mission and what you're working on? Um, sure, so our website is um, tbhfdn.org. Um, and there you can um, learn about our organization, you can donate, um, and you can even um, check out the um, demo of our charity coin. Awesome. Well, thank We're you guys. We're going to have a raffle and a giveaways. Hey. Yes. <laughs> thank you guys Game so much for being on and sitting down with me today. And I can't wait to see what you keep building. Well, thank, thank you. you for having me. That's one small step for man.